What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. I'm back with the post fight. Hassan Nadam defeats Curtis Stevens via unanimous decision. I thought the judges got the scorecard right. Um, I was disappointed. I put this fight on my sleeper list, and I think it could have been a, a better fight if uh, certain things happened. So I want to talk about this in my post fight. Um, first of all, props to Hassan Nadam for doing his thing and actually achieving the victory, getting that win. Now puts him in line to face the winner of Sam Solomon versus Jermaine Taylor. Now, as far as the fight, I thought it would be a little bit more of a explosive sleeper fight, as I mentioned to you, based on the stylistic clash. And one thing I didn't realize is Nadam was a lot taller. I know Curtis Stevens is short for his division, but I didn't realize how much bigger he would look next to Curtis Stevens until I seen him in the ring together. Um, but that's it, the style. Stylistically, Nadam is the slicker fighter, the better mover, kind of agile. He's going to try to keep you at bay with the reach and, and that kind of stuff. And Curtis Stevenson is the power puncher who has a deadly left hook, and he likes to get in close, kind of like a, a Mike Tyson. And not Mike Tyson in the sense of they fight exactly the same because there's a lot of things that, in my opinion, Curtis Stevens didn't do tonight that Mike Tyson definitely would have done. Like, if you were to put a guy like Hassan Nadam in front of Tyson, no competition. Tyson would have definitely knocked him out because it was very apparent that Curtis Stevens was the stronger of the two, despite the actual differences in height and everything. Um, but what Tyson was very good at is closing the gap and closing that distance between you and, and the taller fighter. You know what I'm saying? He had the he had an underrated defense, which a lot of people don't really talk about. I'm talking about prime Tyson, of course. And he, I seen him dip down low, kind of had that peekaboo style. And his offense and defense was very sharp. And he had the speed and he was quick. He had way better footwork than Curtis Stevens showed. And overall, I'm just disappointed with Curtis Stevens' um, performance. I think it could have, despite if he won or lost, it could have been a more um, inter interesting fight. And the other thing I think, and I'm not just saying this because Curtis Stevens is my dude. I, I like boxing. And I'll give it to you real. If, if I didn't, then I would get up here and, and lie to you guys like Curtis Stevens won that fight. I don't think he won. Um, watching this fight, though, it makes me appreciate guys like Gennady Golovkin. And it makes me appreciate guys like Floyd Mayweather. And some of you guys are, what the fuck? They don't even fight like that. What are you talking about, Ego? I'll explain. Now, if you look at this fight and you look at what Triple G does... He is more uh, regarded as the guy like Curtis Stevens. And what I mean by that is the power puncher. When he fights uh, Daniel Gill, when he fights Macklin, he's known as the power puncher. But what Triple G does is he cuts off the fucking ring. And he does it superbly. And he sets up his power. It's one thing to have many power and ridiculous amounts of power. But you have to be able to deliver it. You know what I'm saying? Um... I could have the best boxing videos in the planet, on the planet, but if I don't have an outlet like YouTube where people can hear it, then it doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? I might as well just be recording shit in, in the basement and, you know what I mean, no one hears about it. So, Triple G, he cuts off the ring on his opponents, no matter who they are, how squirrely they are, how tall they are, he finds a way to cut off the ring. Now, as far as why I related Mayweather to this, is because you look at Hassan Nadam and Mayweather seems to stay out of trouble even more so than Nadam did in this fight. And he's in with guys that are sometimes taller than him, maybe an inch or two. Um, guys who outweigh him, guys who are stronger than him. And using slick boxing and the sweet science, he's able to stay off the ring. And if you look at it, if you look at what Mayweather did in both Maidana fights, Maidana is a strong fighter, stronger than Floyd in terms of um, power, pure power. It's no question, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially at 147, Maidana has power. He can crack. We all know this. And if you look at that fight, Maidana used a great jab, a great jab. And Floyd still finds a way to win. Whereas in this fight, there were some scary, tough moments, like in round eight, I think in the round 12, where Nadam got caught. He got caught and it didn't lead into anything, but he got caught by an opponent who wasn't doing that, who was just walking straight in with no jab, you know what I'm saying, just basic shit, I think Luis Colazzo could have made a more competitive fight with Amir Khan, but without the jab, when you have that style of fight, 
and without the proper footwork, you'll lose to a guy like Amir Khan or you'll lose to a guy like Hassan Nadam. So I agree 100% with Teddy Atlas. Um, Curtis Stevens needed to be Robert Guerrero against Berto. He needed to make it a dogfight. He needed to be Lamont Peterson versus Amir Khan. That's what you do to a guy like Hassan Nadam, especially when you have the fucking power advantage and you have a killer left hook. Curtis Stevens, his hand speed is good, but his footwork needs work. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's walking in cement or something like that. But again, this is what it is. Props to Hassan Nadam. Props to Curtis Stevens for lacing him up. I just think there's a lot he could have done differently. He might want to um, explore adding someone or subtracting someone to his corner um, if he feels he's not getting the proper training. But he needs to get it together because even if he would have knocked out Hassan Nadam in the 12th round, which it looked like if there was a little bit more time he might have been able to accomplish, you can't keep relying on your power. You have to set things up. You have to throw punches and put things together for the knockout to come, especially guys that are taller than you, slicker than you, things like that. Don't go in there thinking you're just going to, um, that's like, I'm not, that's like me being a baseball player. And I say, you know what? I'm not swinging at nothing that doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get a home run off of it. That's stupid because whether you got a baseline hit, whether it's a home run, whether it's, a, you know what I mean? Um, just deep into center field, the goal is to hit the ball, you know what I mean? And not strike out. So some of these fighters, they rely on their power so much where, like Ruslan Provotnikov against Chris Algieri, another prime example of this. Um, you look at fights like that, he had his opponent hurt in the first fucking round, knocked him down twice, and he's relying on that home run punch, his power so much where he ends up losing the fight. Or Ruslan versus Timothy Bradley, same thing. You hurt him bad in the first two rounds, and you, you let the middle rounds go, and then you hurt him when it was do or die time in the 12th. It's kind of similar to the Curtis Stevens Hassan Nadam fight. You can't rely on your power at this pro level to just get you out of trouble. And it worked for Curtis Stevens last fight because I thought he was losing that fight too against Toriano Johnson. Shout out to my dude Toriano as well. And he got he got to stop it. Some people said it was premature, others didn't. So that's my assessment of the fight. If you watched it, let me know what you guys thought. Um, last thing I will say is it's funny when you got guys like Edislani Laura, Rigandale, Mayweather, and people say they run, like they clearly run, but I see them infuse um, a multitude of things in their box. Like they box, they use the sweet science, they frustrate you, use lateral movement. To me, Hassan Adam, luckily he was in good shape, but he used a lot of energy just constantly moving. Like that's not how Mayweather fights. Some people will let them tell it, like Ruben Guerrero. They'll act like that's what Mayweather does, but that's really not. Mayweather gives you different looks. Sometimes he just he sits on the ropes. He did it with Maidana in the first fight. He sits on the ropes. And he in pockets, he might use lateral movement or quote-unquote run, which you guys say. But that's not what he does for entire fights. He he mixes it up. He mixes up his attack. Sometimes he walks people down. Like He, he started walking Miguel Cotto down. He started walking Maidana down. You know what I'm saying? And people will act like, oh, Mayweather runs. He's he's a runner. He's, he's a warrior. He's running. <laughs> but people don't appreciate little intricacies like that. Mayweather doesn't run. He he fights. Sometimes he walks you down. He gives you different looks. Hassan Nadam, if you guys are talking about quote-unquote running, what he did was definitely closer to that. You know what I'm saying? But again, it's not his job to make adjustments it's not his job to change anything if he's clearly winning the fight you know what i mean it's curtis stevenson so props to nadam let me know what you guys think of my assessment make sure you like my video as always hate comment or subscribe till next videos ego signing off mm -hmm.